without putting on a uniform Smart when nuts and rode a unicorn through the storm Hey, what is happening guys? Clickwood here back again, bringing you guys another Madden 16 Ultimate Team Budget Squad episode. Guys, today the position that we are taking a look at is one of the most important in the game, and that is running back. You know, obviously this year, guys, I think most people agree that passing is overpowered with the aggressive catch and things like that, but running is still a very important part of the offensive game. I mean, especially if you're going to have a good balanced attack. So that's why we're going to take a look at running backs today. Yesterday was wide receivers, and then we did other... Uh, episodes in previous days as well defensive ends defensive tackles I want to hear from you guys what do you want to see next what position do you want to hear from next um, and then also guys of course let me know in the comment section below if there are any players that maybe could have made the list or guys that you would also recommend for similar budgets I would greatly appreciate all the help guys thank you all so much for all the support that you've given to this series I really do appreciate it and with that said guys what we're going to do is we're going to hop right into it we're going to start off with guys that I call I guess balanced run running backs, okay? And these are guys that aren't necessarily amazing at any particular attribute, but they're definitely good at just about everything. So uh, in this case, we're going to be comparing on the left side of your screen, we've got Terrell Davis. This is the Super Bowl edition, 98 overall. Very, very great card, of course. And we're going to be comparing it to Team of the Week, David Johnson. This is still a card that is very easy to find on the auction block, thankfully. A lot of the Team of the Week cards throughout the year kind of became difficult, especially the ones from the beginning of the year. But this one is not hard to find at all. Going for about 12,000 coins right now over on the PlayStation 4. So you can definitely go out there and find this thing. Now, if you guys are new to the series, the attributes are kind of listed in a certain way. The green attributes are basically areas where the card is better than the other card. So uh, in this case, obviously, you see speed, the first attribute. David Johnson's actually one speed faster than Terrell Davis, so that's green. And then uh, Terrell Davis is red. If they're the same, you will see that they are yellow in those attributes. So that's just a quick key before we get started. Now, for a balanced running back, I really look for somebody that, like I said, can do it all. I want somebody that can have some speed, has some power, and also can go out there and make catches. So that's kind of something that I really like about this David Johnson card because he is really kind of balanced at just about everything. Now, Terrell Davis... He does lack a little bit behind in the pass catching areas. He's not really great at any of the, you know, individual catching attributes, route running, catching, catching traffic, spectacular catch. None of that stuff he's particularly great at. His 75 catching makes him still serviceable, so he's not going to drop many passes as long as he's actually open. But uh, David Johnson kind of blows him away in most of those areas. So that's where the big advantage for David Johnson is. I mean, we're talking like 12. 15, 17 attributes higher, 19 attributes higher in some of those things. So it's not very comparable in those areas. I guess I would say that Terrell Davis isn't much uh, of a balanced running back in that he's not much of a receiver. But where he's more balanced is that he's a really good runner, both speed-wise as well as power-wise. So you're going to see, obviously, that Terrell Davis has 95 speed, 96 acceleration, and then he's still got great trucking, stiff arm, and all of those different types of things that you would look for. Now, some areas where David Johnson does lag a little bit behind, he does only have 91 trucking and 84 strength, which it's not horrible, but it's not great either. So I, I wouldn't recommend necessarily that you go out there and you try to, you know, do things like truck with David Johnson. What I would really recommend that you do with him, I think his most powerful move is actually his juke move so he has a 95 juke that's really really good uh, and when you combine that with the fact that he still has good agility and he's got good carrying and, and things like that along with his acceleration and speed he's going to be able to stop and go on kind of a dime and that's going to make him a very very nice running back for you just as a pure runner so again David Johnson 12,000 coins I think most people at this point know that David Johnson's cards this year have been very very nice uh, budget cards and I think this one is kind of the the top of the budget uh, David Johnson cards basically so uh, that's why he does make the list as our first balanced running back now our second balanced running back is somebody who I really like as well and this card is actually a legend card it's kind of crazy to think that a legend is actually a basically a budget card but that's where we're at right now in Madden um, obviously on the right side of your screen you've got Curtis Martin 94 overall 20,000 coins for this card. It's a little bit more expensive, but still a really cheap price if you're talking about getting a good running back. And it, what's interesting is that we can actually compare him to another really good running back. This is the 99 overall Marshawn Lynch, which 
If memory serves me correctly, this was the first 99 overall card that we saw in Madden this year. We didn't have access to it, but we saw like the the preview of that it would be coming out eventually, basically. Um, and so there are some areas where I think Marshawn Lynch is very, very good. Obviously, he does have great stiff arm, great trucking. I mean, those attributes are insane. 101 tr uh, stiff arm, 100 trucking. He still also has 94 strength. But I, what I actually think is kind of interesting here is that a lot of these attributes between these two cards are exactly the same. They have the same speed, the same acceleration, the same agility, and the same elusiveness. So when it comes to actually like mobility, I they're basically completely identical. Uh, yeah, Marshawn Lynch does have one higher for spin and uh, and one higher for juke as well, but. Other than that, they're pretty much freaking identical. So, um, you know, definitely interesting there that those two cars are so similar in those areas. Now, where Curtis Martin does actually break away from Marshawn Lynch is that he is a substantially better receiver. Once again, uh, Marshawn Lynch isn't quite as good in the passing game, just like the, the previous ones that we saw with Terrell Davis not being quite as good as a receiver. Uh, Curtis Martin is actually a really good receiver. 87 catching, nine, or 79 route running. 81 catch in traffic and 72 spec catch. All really nice attributes. The only areas where Curtis Martin is not good are stiff arm, trucking, and strength. And so you don't want to do those things with, with him, basically. Everything else, he's really good at. I mean, this card is really highly underrated, I think, right now. And for 20,000 coins, it's going to be really difficult to find a better balanced running back. Personally, I look for a guy that has a little bit more speed than this, but I know not everybody agrees with me that speed is as important as I think it is in Madden. So, um, you know, again, if you're somebody that likes to use these guys that have good, you know, good speed, but not amazing speed, but they've got things like great agility, great carrying, um, you know, all the movements and then also the ability to catch as well. Curtis Martin, I think is going to be your guy. So uh, very good value. Like I said, now, with that being said, I want to move on here and I want to talk about guys that are a little bit more role players in their offenses. So these are guys that you want to substitute onto the field in certain situations. In this case, we're going to talk about power running backs. These are guys who basically their job, their sole job is to pick up short yardage. And uh, that's why I actually really, really like the card on the left here. And that's LeGarrette Blunt. Now, this is a most feared item. Most feared items were a lot more prominent in the game months ago, but they're actually still able to be found. And I think one of the biggest reasons is because when Friday the 13th rolls around, uh, which I'm trying to remember when that actually is going to happen. Oh, yeah, it's, it's next month. May is going to have a Friday the 13th. And in previous years, the most feared items re-enraged on Friday the 13th. So you can go out there and get LeGarrette Blunt, And then on Friday the 13th, his attributes are going to boost up to a 99 overall. I think it was a 99. It was it was mid 90s maybe, but his attributes became crazy. Like we're talking like over 100 for trucking, over 100 for stiff arm. His speed boosted up, his strength boosted up. Like everything became really, really overpowered for the Garrett Blunt. And so uh, again, I would really, really highly recommend going out there and picking this thing up for a short yardage running back. If you're somebody that kind of struggles to pick up those short yardage situations, he's almost always going to fall forward. He's got great strength. Like I said, his trucking is really high. Stiff arm is amazing. Um, one thing that I will say about LeGarrette Blunt, obviously he's not a pass catcher, okay? And he's only got 85 speed as well. So he's not somebody that I would recommend having on the field for every down by any means. But when it's a, when it's a short yarded situation, even if you're going to end up passing, it's not a bad idea to, to kind of worry the defense and make them think that you're going to run the ball with LeGarrette Blunt. So it's, you know, third and one, fourth and one, something like that. And maybe you're going to run a, a drag route or something like that. But instead of having your speed running back on the field to, as a potential receiver, what you actually do is you put Blunt out there because that's going to force the defense to pull all their guys down and pull them into the box for you. And uh, then you have the ability to, to do some of those things like corner routes or deep balls or things like that in those situations and uh, really set yourself up for a potentially big play without even handing in the ball. So that's something I definitely like about guys like LeGarrette Blunt. Um, obviously, Eddie Lacy, the campus hero card on the right 50,000 coins, is a better player. I'm not going to act like he's not. But I think that when you consider the fact that Blunt is as cheap as he is, it's really good value for those types of situations because in a third and one, fourth and one situation, you're not going to see much of a difference between Eddie Lacy and LeGarrette Blunt running straight up the middle trying to pick up one or two yards. So with that being said, let's move on to the second grouping of power backs. And again, guys, similar type of situation here. 
On the left side of your screen, you've got Alfred Morris going for about 55,000 coins. This is the Easter card, so uh, a good card overall, I will definitely say. And we compare him to Chris Ivory, though, the team MVP going for about 20,000 coins, so roughly a third of the price, and, and this is actually the closest that I've found in terms of prices, um, and I think these cards are actually very, very comparable. If you look at them, there really aren't a lot of areas where one of the cards blows away the other card. Um, if you look at it, like, for example, speed. Two different, strength, one different, uh, ball carrier vision, one different, spin move, four different, juke move, one different, catching, uh, obviously, Alfred Morris is quite a bit higher, which is funny considering Alfred Morris is notorious for being one of the worst pass catching backs in the league, and I say that as somebody whose team just picked him up in real life, um, but Alfred Morris does definitely have better catching attributes overall. But at the same time, though, he's not spectacular as a receiver or anything like that. I definitely wouldn't want him out there as a primary pass catcher. Um, and, and what I actually think is kind of funny here is that Chris Ivory and Alfred Morris are exactly the same in five different attributes. Like, that's such a similar card. Like, besides the catching attributes, these guys are almost identical. They're going to play almost exactly the same as one another. So that's why I think it's a good comparison here. And again, 20,000 coins, pretty easy price. Uh, you don't have to spend a whole lot to get a good card here and one that you can really use in a lot of different situations. He's not only a short yardage back like LeGarrette Blunt was. I mean, you could definitely also bring him out to the outside and, and pick up, you know, five or six if you needed to on a toss or something like that. You don't really have to run him right up the middle, even though he has good attributes for doing that. So uh, with that being said, guys, let's move on. Let's talk about speed running backs. These are kind of the guys that I personally like kind of gravitate towards, I guess. Uh, that's just my play style. It's not to say that, you know, one style is better than the other necessarily, but on the left side of your screen, you have Ronnie Hillman. This is a another Super Bowl card, 91 overall, and we're comparing him to Amir Abdullah, the 24-hour NFL Combine card, and obviously, because it was a 24-hour card, it's more expensive. I don't think the attributes necessarily dictate it that it should be a 150,000-coin card, but it is, so that's the price that it's at. But if you look at these guys, though, they're actually really similar in a lot of areas. Once again, you talk about the speed and acceleration combinations between these two guys. There's one difference in speed, two difference in acceleration, so uh, pretty much negligible there. Agility, very, very similar. Carrying, very similar. Ball carrier vision, stiff arm, all that stuff is similar. Trucking, elusiveness even, very, very similar. Basically, what it comes down to, guys, is that the Amir Abdullah card has better route running, has better catching traffic, better spectacular catch, better catching. I mean, it's basically a better receiving back. And other than that, they're almost identical. Once again, very, very similar attributes pretty much across the board. Yeah, Abdullah has him beat in most of the areas by one or two, maybe three in a couple different areas. But uh, again, for the price difference, man, you're talking about a card that's 10 times as expensive. You could buy almost 10 Ronnie Hillmans for the price of one Amir Abdullah. I just think that it makes much more sense to hold on to your coins and get a card like the Ronnie Hillman that's going to play almost exactly the same for quite a bit cheaper. And then you can upgrade at another position where, you know, you can see a much more substantial difference. Yes, again, there's a lot of red on the left side of the screen, a lot of green, but if you actually compare the numbers, they're very, very similar to one another, and I don't think that Amir Abdullah's receiving ability makes him worth 10 times as much. I just don't. So that's the first set of speedbacks, guys. Now let's move on to the second set of speedbacks, and again, two really, really good cards here. I think I always have fun personally with the, uh, the out-of-position cards, and that's why we've got Tavon Austin there on the left. Another really, really fun card to use. We're going to compare him to Jamal Charles. This is the draft champions of Jamal Charles. A little bit more difficult to find on the auction house, but I saw plenty of them up. I think I saw three or four of them up today, uh, but there aren't always that many of this card up, so sometimes you have to do, you do kind of have to search around for it, but uh, I mean, it was going for super expensive. I've seen it go for quite a bit cheaper deeper than this, but the prices that were recent as far as on the actual sales of this card were around 450,000 coins. So really, really expensive. And yeah, it's definitely better than Tavon Austin, and it's a better overall player, no question about it, especially when you consider the fact that Tavon Austin's pretty much a detriment in, in a couple of different areas. But uh, at the same time, though, I think Tavon Austin has some abilities that are really similar to Jamal Charles. The speed and acceleration combo, once again, for these speed backs is kind of the most important thing. He's got 97 speed with 94 acceleration. That's really, really quick. That's among the fastest running backs in the game. 97 agility 
as well. This is a card that you could use as a kick returner as well. And I definitely like to see that out of my cards. Makes them a little bit more versatile. And then, um, you know, the abilities after the catch as well. If you're somebody that likes to run with your player after the catch, Tavon Austin can definitely do those types of things. Um, I don't think there's any question about that, that Austin has the ability to make plays after the catch. Not quite as good as Jamal Charles, I will definitely say that, but again, you're only spending 8,000 coins here versus 450,000 coins with Jamal Charles, so definitely a good price. Uh, one of the problems with Tavon Austin, obviously, is that he has some areas, like I said, where he's just terrible. Strength, carrying, and trucking and stiff arm basically are the, are the big things with Tavon Austin where he's not good. You do not want to attempt to lower the shoulder and and uh, run into the offensive line with Tavon Austin. Don't do it. Don't even try. Uh, he's going to get hit and he's going to fumble. So with Tavon Austin, what I like to do is use him on the edge of the field. I like to use him uh, in, you know, if like if I was running a four verticals play or something like that where I can make use of his speed and acceleration against a linebacker potentially, I definitely would like to have this card on the field. Uh, he's going to get some good separation, even though his route running isn't amazing or anything. Uh, and then, you know, if, if you're looking at like a toss or something like that on the goal line, not a bad card to have on the field because he can pick up that edge so easily. So if you were to have him and like a LeGarrette Blunt and a David Johnson as like a combination of running backs, I think you would have a really, really good group of backs, guys that are, you know, role players in your offense, but definitely guys that can do certain things to help you out. And I think that's what's most important at running back is, is picking the right guys for the right situations. So last but not least, guys, I want to take a look at some pass catching running backs. Of course, these are guys that kind of uh, specialize in the the long situations. So you know you're in a fourth and ten or something like that, and you might ne you might need to throw the ball to your running back in a situation like that, or you line them up at wide receiver even, and they can make plays. So on the left side of your screen, you've got Matt Forte going for about ninety thousand coins, and we're going to compare him to Darren Sproles. Uh, this is a throwback, Darren Sproles. It's from Madden 25, so it's got some interesting attributes about it. Definitely higher catching attributes, even than some of his higher cards in terms of overall, which is interesting. Um, obviously, the Matt Forte, again, a football outsider's card, a 24-hour card, so that's why its price is a little bit higher. Um, I would say it would probably be like a 70,000 coin card if it wasn't a limited edition, but um, you know, again, it is what it is, so we're comparing these two directly with one another. Now, in terms of the actual pass catching attributes, Darren Sproles kicks Matt Forte's ass. He's got 92 catching, 91 route running, 84 catching traffic, and 75 spectacular catch. All of those are at least three attributes, uh, or at least a few attributes, I should say, higher than the Matt Forte. So, you know, that's definitely a nice improvement on a card that's quite a bit more expensive. Now, where Darren Sproles does lag behind, very similar to Tavon Austin, Strength, trucking, stiff arm, not good attributes for him. Uh, very low overall. You don't want to run this guy into the in short yardage situations, fourth and one, third and one type of things. He's not the guy for that. He's for the guy, he's the guy that goes out there and is a pass catcher. And that's, you know, specifically what we're talking about with this attribute. Um, he's a pass catching running back. Don't think of him as really anything else. I don't think he's really good at anything else, to be completely honest with you. But uh, he can go out there and make plays. He is short, of course, so that's a disadvantage, whereas Matt Forte is actually a pretty big running back. But uh, as we know, height seems to not be as important this year as it has been in previous years. So something to think about there. But last but not least, guys, we're finally on to the final comparison of this of this video. Uh, we're going to take a look at, on the left side of your screen, more pass-catching running backs. We've got DeMarco Murray on the left. This is, again, another throwback card from Madden 15. I think, it was, I think it was his team of the year item, if I remember correctly. And we're comparing him to Charles Sims, final edition, 88 overall. Obviously, DeMarco Murray better in most attributes, but he's 215,000 coins as well. So that's kind of uh, pretty expensive. Now, DeMarco Murray does lag behind in some areas that I think are kind of interesting here. He's good at route running. He's good at spectacular catch. He's, he's one higher in each of those areas, but his actual catching attribute is five lower than Charles Sims. Sims has some good combinations as well. He's got 95 speed and 96 acceleration. So I think that Charles Sims for 6,500 coins might be one of the best overall 
receiving running backs in the game because he's got the combination of all of those things that you look for, the route running, the catching, um, the speed and the acceleration. Like I mentioned before, Darren Sproles, that he kind of lagged behind in a little bit. Sims definitely has those things. So there are definitely going to be times where somebody lines up in single coverage, a middle linebacker on Charles Sims or something like that, and Sims is going to be able to burn them and, and get deep or beat them on the edge and pick up 20 really, really easily. So that's something I like about Charles Sims. I think this is a good value card. Now, obviously, again, other other areas where he's just not as good, strength, trucking, and stiff arm. It seems to be a pretty common thing with these pass-catching backs. They're not great in those areas. DeMarco Murray is one of the most balanced running backs in this game. You probably could have considered him a quote-unquote balanced running back, but I wanted to show kind of some of the areas where you can really look at guys like Charles Sims and compare them to guys that are quite a bit more expensive um, who you know maybe you would have on the field in most situations, but in a pure, obvious passing situation, I would rather have Charles Sims on the field than DeMarco Murray. So with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor and click that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new as well. Uh, guys, and one more time, let me know in the comments section below if there's another position that you want me to take a look at. I would be glad to do so. Um, again, we're going to try and do one of these pretty much per day or you know maybe every other day depending on my schedule. I can't really you know promise that I'll get one out every single day. But that's kind of my goal, and that's what I've been doing for the past few days. So hopefully we can stay on or roughly on that. That schedule. Thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you again soon. And very, very similar attributes pretty much across the board. Yeah, Abdullah has him beat in most of the areas by one or two, maybe three in a couple different areas. But uh, again, for the price difference, man, you're talking about a card that's 10 times as expensive. You could buy almost 10 Ronnie Hillmans for the price of one Amir Abdullah. I just think that it makes much more sense to hold on to your coins and get a card like the Ronnie Hillman that's going to play almost exactly the same for quite a bit cheaper. And then you can upgrade at another position where, you know, you can see a much more substantial difference. Yes, again, there's a lot of red on the left side of the screen, a lot of green. But if you actually compare the numbers, they're very, very similar to one another. And I don't think that Amir Abdullah's receiving ability makes him worth 10 times as much. I just don't. So... That's the first set of speedbacks, guys. Now let's move on to the second set of speedbacks. And again, two really, really good cards here. I think I always have fun personally with the uh, the out-of-position cards. And that's why we've got Tavon Austin there on the left. Another really, really fun card to use. We're going to compare him to Jamal Charles. This is the draft champions of Jamal Charles. A little bit more difficult to find on the auction house, but I saw plenty of them up. I think I saw three or four of them up today. Uh, but there aren't always that many of this card up. So sometimes you have to do you do kind of have to search around for it. But uh, I mean, it was going for super expensive. I've seen it go for quite a bit cheaper cheaper than this, but the prices that were recent as far as on the actual sales of this card were around 450,000 coins. So really, really expensive. And yeah, it's definitely better than Tavon Austin, and it's a better overall player, no question about it, especially when you consider the fact that Tavon Austin's pretty much a detriment in, in a couple of different areas. But uh, at the same time, though, I think Tavon Austin has some abilities that are really similar to Jamal Charles. The speed and acceleration combo, once again, for these speed backs is kind of the most important thing. He's got 97 speed with 94 acceleration. That's really, really quick. That's among the fastest running backs in the game. 97 agility as well. This is a card that you could use as a kick returner as well. And I definitely like to see that out of my cards. Makes them a little bit more versatile. And then, um, you know, the abilities after the catch as well. If you're somebody that likes to run with your player after the catch, Tavon Austin can definitely do those types of things. Um, I don't think there's any question about that, that Austin has the ability to make plays after the catch. Not quite as good as Jamal Charles, I will definitely say that, but again, you're only spending 8,000 coins here versus 450,000 coins with Jamal Charles, so definitely a good price. Uh, one of the problems with Tavon Austin, obviously, is that he has some areas, like I said, where he's just terrible. Strength, carrying, and trucking and stiff arm basically are the, are the big things with Tavon Austin where he's not good. You do not want to attempt to lower the shoulder and and uh, run into the offensive line with Tavon Austin. Don't do it. Don't even try. Uh, he's going to get hit and he's going to fumble. So with Tavon Austin, what I like to do is use him on the edge of the field. I like to use him uh, in, you know, if like if I was running a four verticals play or something like that where I can make use of his speed and acceleration against a linebacker potentially, I definitely would like to have this card on the field. 
Uh, he's going to get some good separation, even though his route running isn't amazing or anything. Uh, and then, you know, if, if you're looking at like a toss or something like that on the goal line, not a bad card to have on the field because he can pick up that edge so easily. So if you were to have him and like a LeGarrette Blunt and a David Johnson as like a combination of running backs, I think he would have a really, really good group of backs, guys that are, you know, role players in your offense, but definitely guys that can do certain things to help you out. And I think that's what's most important at running back is, is picking the right guys for the right situations. So last but not least, guys, I want to take a look at some pass-catching running backs. Of course, these are guys that kind of uh, specialize in the the long situations. So, you know, you're in a fourth and ten or something like that, and you might, ne- you might need to throw the ball to your running back in a situation like that. Or you line them up at wide receiver even, and they can make plays. So on the left side of your screen, you've got Matt Forte going for about 90,000 coins, and we're going to compare him to Darren Sproles. Uh, this is a throwback Darren Sproles. It's from Madden 25, so it's got some interesting attributes about it. Definitely higher catching attributes, even than some of his higher cards in terms of overall, which is interesting. Um, obviously, the Matt Forte, again, a football outsider's card, a 24-hour card, so that's why its price is a little bit higher. Um, I would say it would probably be like a 70,000 coin card if it wasn't a limited edition, but um, you know, again, it is what it is, so we're comparing these two directly with one another. Now, in terms of the actual pass-catching attributes, Darren Sproles kicks Matt Forte's ass. He's got 92 catching, 91 route running, 84 catching traffic, and 75 spectacular catch. All of those are at least three attributes, uh, or at least a few attributes, I should say, higher than the Matt Forte. So, you know, that's definitely a nice improvement on a card that's quite a bit more expensive. Now, where Darren Sproles does lag behind, very similar to Tavon Austin, Strength, trucking, stiff arm, not good attributes for him. Uh, very low overall. You don't want to run this guy into the in short yardage situations, fourth and one, third and one type of things. He's not the guy for that. He's for the guy. He's the guy that goes out there and is a pass catcher, and that's you know specifically what we're talking about with this attribute. Um, he's a pass catching running back. Don't think of him as really anything else. I don't think he's really good at anything else, to be completely honest with you. But uh, he can go out there and make plays. He is short, of course, so that's a disadvantage, whereas Matt Forte is actually a pretty big running back. But uh, as we know, height seems to not be as important this year as it has been in previous years. So something to think about there. But last but not least, guys, we're finally on to the final comparison of this of this video. Uh, we're going to take a look at, on the left side of your screen, more pass-catching running backs. We've got DeMarco Murray on the left. This is, again, another throwback card from Madden 15. I think it was I think it was his team of the year item, if I remember correctly. And we're comparing him to Charles Sims, final edition, 88 overall. Obviously, DeMarco Murray better in most attributes, but he's 215,000 coins as well, so that's kind of uh, pretty expensive. Now, DeMarco Murray does lag behind in some areas that I think are kind of interesting here. He's good at route running. He's good at spectacular catch. He's he's one higher in each of those areas, but his actual catching attribute is five lower than Charles Sims. Sims has some good combinations as well. He's got 95 speed and 96 acceleration. So I think that Charles Sims for 6,500 coins might be one of the best overall receiving running backs in the game because he's got the combination of all of those things that you look for, the route running, the catching, um, the speed and the acceleration. Like I mentioned before, Darren Sproles that he kind of lagged behind in a little bit. Sims definitely has those things. So there are definitely going to be times where somebody lines up in single coverage, a middle linebacker on Charles Sims or something like that. And Sims is going to be able to burn them and, and get deep or beat them on the edge and pick up 20 really, really easily. So that's something I like about Charles Sims. I think this is a good value card. Now, obviously, Obviously, again, other other areas where he's just not as good, strength, trucking, and stiff arm. It seems to be a pretty common thing with these pass-catching backs. They're not great in those areas. DeMarco Murray is one of the most balanced running backs in this game. You probably could have considered him a quote-unquote balanced running back, but I wanted to show kind of some of the areas where you can really look at guys like Charles Sims and compare them to guys that are quite a bit more expensive um, who you know maybe you would have on the field in most situations, but in a pure obvious passing situation, I would rather have Charles Sims on the field than DeMarco Murray. 
So with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor and click that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new as well. Uh, guys, and one more time, let me know in the comments section below if there is another position that you want me to take a look at. I would be glad to do so. Um, again, we're going to try and do one of these pretty much per day or you know maybe every other day depending on my schedule. I can't really you know promise that I'll get one out every single day. But that's kind of my goal and that's what I've been doing for the past few days. So hopefully we can stay on or roughly on that schedule. Thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you again soon.